Hello, my name is Tony Chan. I'm here with Telecom TV. Uh, I'm in Hong Kong for the Qualcomm 4G, 5G Summit. With me today is Fortis Coronas, who is Executive Advisor for 5G with BTEE. Fortis, thank you for joining us. Hey, Tony, how you doing? Very, very yeah. good. So you spoke in a panel this morning at the keynote uh, session. Uh, what did you talk about? Yeah, first of all, you know, it's been an incredible, and it is an incredible 4G, 5G summit organized by Qualcomm. It's a huge pleasure, but a huge honor also to, uh, to be part of that ecosystem. And, uh, you know, the subjects around uh, how do we commercialize 5G, what is the role of the, uh, you know, us as telecommunication operator. Uh, so these were really, really very exciting, exciting moments for us and in the industry. And that was part of the overall panel. So we discussed about the, um, our role in this changing environment in a world that, uh, you know, data growth is really fascinating. It's over 50%, 70%, uh, you know, consumers are, uh, you know, connected in many, many devices um, in mobility or in, in the home. Uh, the enterprise and how, uh, you know, us as communication providers and telecommunication operators, uh, we can provide an incredible transformation to the vertical industries. Uh, and then uh, for us, BT and E, we are, you know, really a converged player. And uh, in this convergence, uh, you know, uh, narrative, uh, we will build our best, you know, best services for our customers if they are consumers or enterprises. So this is a great time to, to bring 5G in play. Okay. So what would you say uh, is your, you know, primary motivation for uh, heading towards this 5G journey? Well, first of all, our brands are about innovation, you know, so we... Um, it, it's a fascinating new world when we, we're going to see a, you know, incredible applications coming out. Uh, so the first four, 5G devices will uh, demonstrate you know, a different, a different, different features, speeds that are you know, unprecedented, certainly above one gigabit per, per, per second. We will see low latencies, we will see massive connectivity. So this is, you know, this is a great time for us in our industry. And uh, it's, an, it's a great opportunity for us being a you know, UK provider to continue this innovation. We were the first in e as EE to launch 4G in the UK in 2012. And since then we have continued that innovative launching of products and services and uh, providing an incredible net promoter score of our services and being perceived as the innovative brand and the, the best in you know, uh, 4G network in the UK. So, uh, looking specifically at the consumer segment, what would be uh, you know your your primary use case that you see in, in that segment? Definitely, the growth of uh, of data uh, is the big opportunity for 5G. So, we believe that um, uh, connectivity capacity in the in the urban areas would be a very important thing because our 4G network is really great. And by the way, the summit is still called. 4G and 5G. I don't know. Maybe this is the last one that it's going to be called 4G and 5G. So we need to talk about our 4G network, which is fantastic, and that is the uh, we have uh, you know great uh, geography coverage of over 91 percent, population 99.6 percent, and and therefore uh, you know there's areas that require even more uh, capacity, and that would be the first uh, you know implementations of providing that extra capacity so that people can have incredible speeds at any time of the day, you know big commuter areas and so on. So that would be. I would say the first demonstration of 5G. Now, from then, applications like we'll see, you know, this AR, VR, this gaming opportunities, this video streaming, which is growing, you know. So, by having that capacity and capability, we will, we don't even know today what's going to be available, you know, in two years down the road, you know. So that's from the consumer point of view. You know, great devices, great experiences, and a very high reliability that we. You know, we see that everybody requires an extremely high reliability, and that we are we have the best network, and we want to continue that sort of um, uh, DNA, if I may say. Of course, you know what my uh, next question is, right? What about the enterprise then? Yeah. The enterprise will not wait too long, as well. You know, so uh, uh, for 5G, it's a transformation for the enterprise. I think that's where we we see the uh, the very uh, the big changes coming in the industry. You know, so there's very big verticals like the automotive industry or the manufacturing industry or public safety and security. So there is a lot of opportunity around there because of the, um, on the one hand, the, um, the latency, which, will, which provides the precision and the, and the uh, precision, but also the speed 
of, uh, of, of between humans and, and robots or machine to machine communication will, that would bring us in a new level um, and therefore um, it's, it's quite transformative you know so 5G also brings new standards like with virtualization and, and uh, you know network function virtualization but also network slicing our role as a telecommunication provider can be more substantial in managing telecommunication services as a whole from a converged story, you know, the fixed and the mobile as well. As a network operator with a 4G network, what do you think you have to do to your network to actually, you know, get from 4G to 5G? Yeah, there's a lot of engineering that is going on at the moment and it's, it's really great times, you know. So there's like, I would say, practically three chapters, if I may say. The one chapter is around the device and how to create the device. So we are bleeding edge at the moment and uh, right. We are, you know, we want to be in the first wave, and you know, the UK needs BT and E to be there, and, and you know, in a, in, a, in a society which is a really a, a digital society, a digital economy of services, and uh, so the the device part, um, creation of those devices with Qualcomm, for example, chipsets, is is super important. So that's the first outside in part of the equation. The second part is the RAN, the radio access network, which is new RAN, and we are, you know, deploying a network. We already had. Great examples from, um, you know, in Canary Wharf, we already have a real live um, connection of 5G, real live uh, usage with a, you know, testing device or a, uh, a CPE for indoor solutions and so on. So the, the radio axis is a very, um, it's a bit of a different uh, ecosystem than the 4G itself. It's an evolution, but it has to do with a lot of, uh, you know, new antenna sets, a new RAN, a bigger backhaul, etc. So that's the second layer. And then the third layer is the, um, the core systems. So moving into, let's say, um, uh, you know, evolution of the core uh, to non-standalone in the beginning and, and then dual mode, you know, standalone and non-standalone so that 4G and 5G users will be um, connecting seamless to 4G and 5G networks. And, and the power is really very much in the core as we will sort of um, blend the capabilities of 4G together, providing resources to any user or any enterprise so that it has the best customer experience at any time we need it, yeah. Uh, since we're here in, uh, at this uh, you know, fabulous Qualcomm event, what's Qualcomm doing for you as an operator? I mean, obviously they're making chips, so it doesn't really, like, it, there seems to be a bridge, but uh, obviously they're a very important partner to you. Uh, absolutely. I mean, First of all, a huge thank you for Qualcomm for being an incredible partner in the last, I would say, more than eight years now. Uh, we've been working together on innovation. It's, it's, it's about the chipset, but it's what, what it brings to the society, what it brings to the well-being of the people, uh, for the enterprise and so on. And we, we had a fascinating and amazing journey with uh, Qualcomm. So it's a you know, strategic, it's, not a, it's, it's more than a partner. You know? We are uh, very much uh, collaborating. Uh, and we launched features that were, uh, you know, first and best in the world. Uh, the first, uh, you know, 4G devices. Then we, we, we launched, you know, voice over Wi-Fi to cover indoor. We had carrier aggregation. We had multiple carrier aggregations. And now, guess what? Here we are, you know, 5G. And so a massive uh, a partnership uh, that brings a lot of innovation uh, to consumers in both enterprises. And, and it's this partnership by working very early on to building these features and roadmaps that our you know, millions and millions of customers uh, require. You know? What about specifically to 5G? What were some of, the, some of your key takeaways from, from Qualcomm with 5G? First of all, it's important that we have embraced the 3GPP standards together from the start. You know? and, uh, and through this journey, uh, you know, we're building the first uh, you know, test cases, the interoperability checks, between the different components of the ecosystem. The 5G ecosystem is something that we had to go and build. It's not something that existed. So, you know, EEBT, we are, um, we, are the, we are innovators. And our DNA is about working very early and defining the features that the society will need in, in two or three years down the road. And Qualcomm is those partners that we can engage very early on in a very serious uh, conversation about what are these functions and services that we require that they operate over our network, how can we evolve our network, what should be in the, in the devices, what is in the IoT, what is in the enterprise space. So Qualcomm covers you know, the, quite, you know, the features and the capabilities of what we can do on our fantastic network. So it's more of a chipset manufacturer and more of a partner. 
in this process. Thank you very much. Thank you.